Apple is releasing the M2 MacBook Pro early, and by the time you're watching this video, you could probably order it or you're just a few hours away instead of having to wait for next month like they told us just a week ago. So with that, many of you guys are asking, is it really worth buying the M2 MacBook Pro or should you spend a bit more money and buy the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro instead? Well, today I'm gonna answer exactly that. And yes, depending on what you do, for some, the M2 MacBook Pro, even the base model, will outperform the 14 inch for less money. And because of what Apple did with the M2 MacBook Pro and the newly released benchmarks that we have, we know almost everything about it. So this will be the most detailed feature and quality comparison anywhere on the internet to help you decide which one to buy until of course we get our M2 models from Apple and dive even deeper with a ton of productivity tasks and special tests that most people don't want to spend time on. So make sure to click that subscribe button down below to check out that video. But this one will help all of you guys who are trying to decide which one they should order right now. The 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro looks identical to the M1 MacBook Pro. Heck, it's pretty much identical to the same one that came out in 2016. Apple decided to take the easy and more profitable route and keep everything the same other than a few software tricks and replacing the M1 chip with M2. And that not only frustrated many people, leading them to want to buy either the redesigned MacBook Air or the 14 inch MacBook Pro, but that also gives me a bit of concern about how the small single fan will handle the now confirmed higher clock speeds and more graphics cores of the M2 chip. The 14 inch Pro has the new design that launched last fall with a boxier slate type look that replaced the previous high end 13 inch. Now in some ways it actually looks older and way bigger, but the 14 inch is actually slightly thinner than the 13, it just doesn't look that way because of all the tapered sides. But with that, it is also half a pound heavier. That boxy design allows not only for a larger internal battery, which we'll talk about real world battery life in just a bit, but also for a much better cooling system as well. The intake slots are much larger and on the back, almost the whole section below the hinge is for a hot air exhaust instead of just two parts on the M2 13 inch MacBook. With that, the M2's exhausts are partially blocked when the screen is open, whereas the new 14 inch has a convertible design where the airflow doesn't get blocked, but instead it's rerouted and can flow up in front of the screen, so no matter what, even if your laptop is on a blanket, there are no issues with cooling. And thanks to the newly released benchmark tests, we know that the M2 chip also uses more power for both the GPU and the CPU, and that the previous M1 would sometimes throttle in the MacBook Pro running on that single fan loudly, so we'll see how it handles the M2. Whereas the $2,000 14-inch stayed silent pretty much all the time, even under heavy loads, because of its larger and dual fans, along with the better airflow design. So if having a cool and quiet system matters for you, keep that in mind. The same thing goes for speakers. The 13-inch uses the same ones from 2016, whereas the 14 has six speakers with dual force canceling woofers that sound much, much better. Here, take Take a listen for yourself. Now, even though we have a $900 microphone setup, the difference in real life is even greater. So if you care about having great speakers, the 14 inch is the way to go. Now with that, there is a massive difference in webcam quality and not only sharpness since the 14 inch uses a 1080p webcam instead of 720p in the 13 inch, but the exposure and colors are way better. And then low light performance is just incomparable. I would just say Apple should have put a 1080p webcam in the M2 MacBook Pro. Getting back to the design, the 13 inch M2 Mac Pro gives you two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one of which is used for charging as well as a headphone jack. With the 14 inch, Apple gave its users what they have been asking for for years now. And we have of course the same headphone jack along with a dedicated HDMI port and an SD card reader. Then we have three Thunderbolt 4 ports and a dedicated magnetic MagSafe charging port, which of course is convenient and it can prevent damage. This means that if you're charging and transferring files 
files from an SD card reader or you're connected with an HDMI adapter cable, you are out of ports on the 13 inch, whereas the 14 inch, you still have three full speed Thunderbolt ports available. Now, yes, you can buy a dock or a cheaper dongle for the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And we covered our favorite budget options in my must have MacBook accessories video, which I'll link to down in the description. But it is nice to not need any dongles or adapters. And even if you do buy one, you'll still be limited to only one external display at full quality with the 13 inch instead of three with the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now, there are some workarounds and there's some expensive adapters like this Anchor one that can work, but you will spend a lot of money and compromise in display quality either way. The 14 inch can also fast charge to 50% in 30 minutes over MagSafe or USB type C if you have a power source that is over 94 watts, which could be a USB type C display or my favorite power bank, which I'll link down in the description below, along with the 96 watt adapter that comes with the higher spec models or is a $20 upgrade for the base spec. The 13 inch MacBook Pro will take over an hour to reach 50%, no matter what you have it connected to. Now, as far as how long they last, the 13 inch is ahead due to its four efficiency cores instead of two and the smaller and much worse quality screen. For video playback, you get 20 hours compared to 17, which isn't that big of a difference, but for web usage, you get 17 hours compared to 11, which does make a real world difference. Of course, this is from Apple using low brightness and very easy tests that rely on the media engines and the efficiency cores. Now, in our extensive testing, we found that the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro lasted three hours longer than the 14-inch in mixed real-world usage. And since the M2 uses about 10% more power for the CPU and 25% more power for the graphics, the real-world battery life will drop, but will still be about one to two hours ahead of the 14-inch. Now, another reason the 14-inch uses more power is that larger notch display, which with much slimmer bezels and with the much smoother 120 Hertz ProMotion instead of 60 Hertz. Now, not only does it support a billion colors compared to 16 million on the 13 inch Pro, it also uses mini LED technology that lets it reach an insane 1600 nits of peak brightness and a crazy high 1000 nit full screen sustained compared to 500 on the 13 inch Pro. Now, because of this, we get super deep blacks and very bright highlights, so HDR movie watching is amazing. And if you wanna work with HDR video or images, you have to get the 14 inch Macro Pro. The one down downside is under the most tough conditions, you might see some glow around small black bright objects on pure black backgrounds, but this is very rare. And in the same situation, the 13 inch Macro Pro's blacks would be gray anyways. And now onto performance, starting with the SSD speed, the 14 inch write speed is more than twice as fast and the read is close to twice as fast. So you're getting much better SSDs. And as far as CPU and graphics performance, we've already gotten many results uploaded online. And we know that Apple raised the power usage and the clock speeds, which allows them to hit 1,919 points for Geekbench single core, which is the fastest in any laptop, about 9% faster than the M1 Pro. For multi-core, M2 has a nice boost up to 8,928, still slower than the 9,884 in the base M1 Pro, but it is now only 10% behind, whereas the M1 Pro used to be 32% faster than M1. In terms of graphics, these two extra cores really help, and even though the 14-core M1 Pro is still more powerful than the 10-core M2, if we do the math, Apple is getting 2,983 points out of each core compared to 2,530 with the the M1 Pro, proving that Apple is pushing more wattage to each core, which once again has me wondering about heat and fan noise. Now, as far as the media engines, this is one area where the M2 is better. The M1 did not support ProRes hardware decoding and encoding, which only came with M1 Pro and above. But Apple surprisingly added that to the M2 chip, so a $1,300 MacBook Pro will edit ProRes better than most high-end Windows PCs. But with that, M2 has even faster H.264 and H.265 hardware, which now supports AK, where M1 Pro does not. 
meaning that 8K videos will export faster with the M2, as long as your graphics don't bottleneck you, and even if they do, the M2 might still be faster than the 14 core version of the M1 Pro. Doing the math, that means that the M2 can export 4K video at 120 frames per second now, whereas the M1 Pro in the 14 inch only does this at 90, just like the M1. Meaning for those of you guys that work with standard 4K video without a crazy amount of effects, which is most people on YouTube, the 13 inch M2 Mac Pro will actually edit video faster if both have 16 gigs of RAM. Now, of course, if you spend even more money, you can upgrade the processors and the graphics in the 14 inch, but most people that are thinking of stretching their budget to buy a 14 inch instead of a 13 won't be just tacking on a ton of extra money on top of that. As far as photo editing, we don't know exactly how fast it will be, but based on our previous testing and how much faster the M2 is, as well as the higher memory speed and bandwidth, I would estimate it to be about two minutes or maybe slightly under that for our standard photo test. So close to the M1 Pro, but not beating it out if both machines have the same amount of RAM. Now, of course, the M2 allows you to get up to 24 gigs of RAM for $200 more than the 16 gigabyte option, whereas the 14 inch requires you to get 32 gigs for a $400 bump. But I think that if you're spending that much money on uh, for a 13 inch MacBook Pro to get you up to 24 gigs, it's not really worth it. You might as well go for the 14 inch. So overall, even if you upgrade the M2 and you get it close to the price of the 14 inch, the 14 inch is still faster in most ways. Now, if you're getting the base model M2 MacBook Pro, that's a $700 upgrade. Unless you know that you need something specifically from the 14 inch, I would not do it. But instead, I would take a look at the M2 MacBook Air that you could actually get for less money. I think that is also a better machine and we actually have a detailed comparison against that as well, which you can check out right over there. Go Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching this video. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.